Presenting the Bronica RF645. This unusual camera is a 645 rangefinder and a multiple award winner that nobody knows about. So let's talk about it. Bronica, or as it's sometimes known as Zenza Bronica, made the RF645 as their swan song before the brand was shut down by the new owner, Tamron. Mm. But before I talk about this camera, I want to talk a little bit more about Bronica because it really was a great company and it has an incredible history in Japanese photography. Um, it was founded by Zenzaburo Yoshino um, just after World War II. And what he did, he loved cameras. He really loved cameras. And he had a camera store in Kanda in Tokyo. And he sold a lot of high-end cameras, uh, Leicas and things like that, to the U.S. servicemen. And while he was doing that job, he discovered that there was a lot of cameras on the market, but none of them did what he wanted them to do. And so he started designing his own cameras. And he set up a company um, initially, which was a maker of luxury goods. So Bronica actually started out as a company that didn't make cameras. They made luxury goods like lighters and, and cigarette cases and things like this um, for, for you know, high spending clients. And he used the money from that company to set up Zenza Bronica, um, designed his own cameras and released them in the 50s, 1950s to compete with Hasselblad. So the original Bronica cameras were designed to compete with Hasselblad and they were really popular on the Japanese market. Um, so much so that uh, they continued to develop new cameras and they continued to develop new lenses working on their own lenses. And they also developed quite a portfolio of patents, which would be something that would, you know, come to bite them in the ass on the uh, other end. As the company got bigger, they produced more lenses, they produced more cameras, and then they got taken over um, in 1998 by Tamron, who saw the uh, lens collection and the patents and went, yeah, we'll have some of that, thanks very much. And that was really what you could call the beginning of the end for Bronica, because after that, uh, shortly, in short order, the, the film cameras were taken off the market. But until then, uh, Bronica really had a, a very fixed place in uh, Japanese photography and became quite a storied name. Which caught the eye of Tamron in 1998, when they acquired Bronica for the optical division and patents. And finally, we get to the RF645. In 2000, they released the RF645 to great critical acclaim. It won the special prize at the Camera Grand Prix and the ISA Award for Professional Cameras in 2001. Oh, and TIPA in 2001 as well. And then Tamron shut down SLR manufacture in 2002. The RF645 lasted until 2005 before the doors were closed on the Bronica brand forever. Fun fact, in Japan, 120 film is known as Buroni film, after the katakana of Bronica. Hashtag not 120mm. So, on to this seriously underappreciated camera. This camera was a real departure from the previous SLR type cameras from the company, and it was considered to be a serious accomplishment for Bronica. The goal was to make a lightweight and compact medium format rangefinder, and they smashed it. The camera is very well balanced, and the controls on the back are easily accessible when using the camera. A lot of thought has been put into the usability of the camera, and it shows. The exposure compensation dial is designed to be easy to use whilst using the finder. The RF645 has a portrait style rangefinder with 33mm baseline to provide greater accuracy. The finder itself is well balanced with the LCD readout clearly visible. The finder is multi coated as well and very bright with good contrast. The shutter speed dial is big and chunky, like me, and easy to use when shooting. Everything is within reach thanks to the compact nature of the camera. The camera was released with three lenses, the 45mm f4, 65mm f5 as seen here, and the 135mm f4.5, which are all very capable with good sharpness and contrast. Later on came the legendary 100mm 4.5, which is very hard to find now. 
They all use leaf shutters with motors built in. This camera has everything that anyone could want from a medium format rangefinder, including multiple exposures, AE lock, aperture priority and exposure compensation. It really is a remarkable piece of engineering. Veronica really did go out with a bang. So, pros and cons. Pros, compact, excellent design, great lenses and a joy to use. Cons, extremely hard to repair, finder alignment can be an issue and the prices are through the roof. Please like and subscribe and comment if you like this video. You can see this and many great cameras at japancamerahunter.com. They still fucking pissing up there. They are.